Today in AP Physics, a hollow tube of length L opens at both ends, as shown, is held in midair. A tuning fork with a frequency F0 vibrates at one end of the tube and causes the air in the tube to vibrate at its fundamental frequency. Express your answers in terms only of the length of the tube and the fundamental frequency F0. And we have three things to calculate. Determine the wavelength of the sound the speed of sound in the air inside the tube, and the next higher frequency at which this air column would resonate. We'll determine the wavelength of the sound that's produced underneath these conditions, but first a quick lecture. At this level of physics, you might find it helpful to know that there are basically three mechanisms that uh, problem writers use to contextualize the concepts of standing waves. At least that's the way I see it. I want to introduce you to these three and then of course show you which one we're dealing with if it's not terribly obvious already. One of the archetypes is such that you'd find on a stringed instrument. It's a string fixed at both ends. Another one that you find, like a wind instrument, is an air column open at both ends. And still another one that you find, and which this problem will become actually when we finish these first three questions, is an air column open at only one end. I'll give you a wild guess as to which one we're dealing with here. Yes, it's the air column open at both ends, and let's lay out some information about that setup since that's relevant to the problem here. The picture you're looking at here is a representation of the air displacement in such a column when the air is being disturbed according to a nearby source of energy such as this tuning fork. You see something needs to vibrate in order to produce sound. In some cases that thing is a string and in this one it is the air within the tube. This diagram represents the first resonance that can occur in such a column. Resonance frequency 1 produces one node in the column a place where the displacement of the waves is zero, whereas at the ends of the tube the air is free to oscillate. It's really helpful to know that this is the scheme, simple as it is, because using this knowledge I can develop the wavelength of the sound associated with the resonant frequency. Does this look like a complete wave to you? You know, a sine or cosine wave that we use to develop our models of sound in a fluid-like air? Actually, it does not. It's missing something, so watch this. We draw these lines and we have a complete cycle, as if this was the beginning of a sine wave. We know it goes up, crosses the equilibrium, goes down, and comes back up to where it started. That is a complete sine wave. And originally, you can see that this wing was taking up two quarters of the whole shape. So by adding those extra segments, we have two more quarters, which is to say we now have a full wavelength lambda naught associated with the fundamental frequency f naught. So we can surmise that the lambda naught is thus equal to two times the length of the original tube. That is my favorite way to develop and to remember that if you are at the fundamental frequency the fundamental wavelength, as we'll call it, is two times the length of the open open tube. I will continue that analysis and give you a resulting formula you can use to find the information on any harmonic you want, but first we're going to need something in order to give us those results, which is what Part B asks us for, the speed of sound in air inside the tube. You may actually know the number for this, but we can give it symbolically just as they asked in terms of L and F naught. All we need is the simple formula, the wave formula, or one of them. V, speed of a wave, is equal to lambda F, wavelength times frequency, and we just need to use our, our results where our wavelength is going to be 2L and our frequency is going to be the fundamental that they gave us with. So we have the velocity, which is the wavelength, and the frequency that wavelength is associated with, or vice versa. There is the speed of sound in the air inside this tube 
it should always be two times the length times the fundamental frequency, which is pretty elegant and pretty convenient. But time for the good part. Part C, determine the next higher frequency at which this air column would resonate. We'll need the information we just found, namely the velocity of the air inside the cylinder. But remember that thing I said about the nodes? In other words, if I take this diagram down here, and I'll remind you that I said first fundamental, first harmonic, okay, fundamental frequency, has one node. But what if I told you that the second harmonic, the next highest one, geometrically in terms of this air displacement inside the cylinder, simply has two nodes. And I connect those, no those nodes just as you would in any trigonometric function, sine or cosine. I'll do so like this. And there's our model. This time, unlike in the fundamental situation, there is an entire trig function. There is an entire cycle inside this diagram. You can see it here. You want to call it a cosine starting up and ending up. You can also convince yourself that there's a whole sine uh, stuffed inside there in terms of the length. So all I'm saying is that your, let's call it lambda 1 because we had to call lambda naught the uh, the wavelength of the fundamental, but that's your second harmonic. That's the wavelength associated with your second harmonic. It is equal to the length of the tube. So lambda 1 is equal to the length which by the wave formula where v equals lambda f rearranged for the frequency we find that v over lambda is equal to f. We'll find that by substitution F1, the thing we'll have to call this second harmonic, second overtone, is 2L, F0 over L. So quite simply, the second, the second fundamental frequency, or sorry, not the second fundamental frequency, that's not correct, rather the second harmonic, the next frequency after the fundamental that gives me a standing wave is equal to two times the first, two times the fundamental frequency. So to me, the thing that we learned is that if you want a harmonic, just give the appropriate number of nodes to your open open diagram and see how long the complete wave, the complete cycle of your trig function of choice takes relative to the length of the tube and this result can be gener generalized. This is my favorite part about this problem. Okay, Even though the geometry gets a little bit tricky, you can bust out a ruler anytime and just make sure your nodes are drawn carefully, your diagrams are perfect, and you can get a result, but you'll also find that the results can be generated as such. Yes, in the open open case, Fn is simply equal to n plus 1 times F0 where n equals 0 is the fundamental mode. This will tell you that f0 is equal to 1 times f0. And lambda n, the wavelength associated with each harmonic, is equal to 2 over n plus 1 times the length of your tube. And with that information, you may calculate the properties of whatever size tube you would like as it pertains to the standing waves of air within it.